This is the island of Tenerife and these are the top 7 things to do when you get there. Now this is in no particular order but the first location I'd visit is Masca Valley which is located in the northwest of the island. Masca is a small village that is based in the valley within the mountains of northwest Tenerife. The main TF1 motorway takes you most of the way there until you have to come off and drive down some fairly steep single lane roads. This is where the adventure starts. The driving can both be scary and thrilling. There are several points to stop off along the ways to take in some of the views. The village itself is a very picturesque and tranquil village. There are local vendors selling cactus fruits which I recommend you give a try. There is also a restaurant at the entrance of the village which you can use for refreshments. My second recommendation is Palmatum which is located in the north of the island in the city of Santa Cruz de Tenerife. Although less touristy, there are some attractions like the Palmatum, which is a botanical garden housing trees from all over the world. The entire thing is an artificial hill built on a former rubbish dump for the city. What's the point of visiting Tenerife if you don't visit its main attraction, Mount Teide? Located in the centre of the island, it is what defines Tenerife's landscape. I do have a more detailed video which is linked down below. Mount Teide is the highest summit in Spain, towering over at 3,718 metres. Mount Teide is classed as an active volcano, although the last eruption was over 100 years ago. If you're short on time and there's only one thing you can do on the island of Tenerife, this is it. As well as the spectacular views from the top, there are also some amazing views along the way. If you have a rental car, then you can make use of it by stopping off on viewpoints along the way. One thing the government did right with the roads was that they included stopping off points, which allow you to take in some of the views. My next recommendation is stargazing. Now, Tenerife is known for its low light pollution, therefore it makes it ideal for stargazers. As well as the main observatory in the centre of the island, there are several other locations which can be found all across the island. One of them we mentioned earlier, which was Masca Valley. There are several guided tours to all these locations, so do check with your local tour operator. This was my attempt to take a picture using my iPhone. I'm sure you can get much better than this using a SLR camera. My next recommendation is Laurel Park. This is located on the outskirts of Puerto de la Cruz in the north of the island and was originally created for a sanctuary for parrots. Now it includes dolphin shows as well as other animal attractions. If you love water parks, then you love Siam Park. Is one of the better water parks that I've visited in my time. It's themed around Thai architecture and culture. Located in the south of the island, it just borders the TF21, which makes it quite easy to get to. It rivals some of the bigger and better water parks found in the likes of Dubai. In fact, some of the rides are quite identical to the ones in Dubai. And it just isn't for adrenaline junkies. There are areas for kids and family, making it an ideal way to cool off in the summer months. Now my last recommendation isn't something that I'd usually recommend. However, when I was there, water sports were not an option due to windy weather. Therefore, we decided to give this a try. Fortunately, I'm glad I gave it a try. The terrain was more rough than I'd expected, which added to the adrenaline, which was awesome. And the fact that there was only three of us meant that the experience was a lot more personalised and customised to us. It wasn't just a long convoy of endless quad bikes. Now there is a lot more to do in Tenerife than what I've just listed. Tenerife for some time has had its reputation tarnished by the party going scene. Nowadays it's a lot more family friendly and there's something here for everyone, even the party goers. One of the things I love about Canary Islands and Tenerife is that during the winter it is still quite relatively warm. In fact, when I was there in November, it had hit 30 degrees. 
and with the fact that it's relatively cheap to get to, in fact my flight only cost me £32, meaning that it's an excellent winter destination as well as an all year round destination. Those are just some of the reasons to visit Tenerife and the Canary Islands. Hope this video has been of some use to you. If it has been, do give it a like and do leave us a comment if you've been to Tenerife. Also, please do subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.